back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is all about my pregnancy must-haves. So I'm currently just over 28 weeks pregnant so I feel like I've had enough of a pregnancy to recommend what I've used and I've probably pretty much used everything that I'm now going to use for the rest of my pregnancy. I don't think there will be much else that I would ever need to purchase during my pregnancy. This video was actually highly requested by a lot of people so I guess it's just an insight for people who may be really early on in their pregnancies or are looking to get pregnant and just want to kind of know what to buy and what to use and what's good, what's a waste of money. There are lots of things that we can invest our money into when we are pregnant and I think some of the things are just probably a bit of a waste but obviously everybody is different and what I like and dislike you might really like or dislike. So obviously it's each to their own and it depends on how your pregnancy has gone. So just a little bit of background if you haven't watched my video before. I have had a very uncomplicated and easy pregnancy to be honest. I've had absolutely no sickness. I didn't lose my appetite. I actually gained a bit of an appetite in the first sort of 12 weeks. I've had no real problems with back pain or hip pain or anything like that. Like, to be honest, it's been quite a breeze. I've just had the odd tiredness and the odd headache here and there. So I have been very lucky. So I guess I haven't had to maybe buy as many things as what other people may have had to. I'm just going to literally jump straight into the video. So please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. So the first products I would recommend are these Mamma Mia body creams. So we have the Tummy Rub Butter and the Tummy Rub Oil. And then also there is a tummy rub scrub that you can use in the shower. I use my tummy rub butter on a morning because it's quite a thin consistency and it really does go a long way. It smells absolutely gorgeous and I feel like it just really soaks into the stomach and you don't it doesn't really matter if you're going to wear clothes straight over the top of it. So I always use my butter in the morning and then I will use the tummy rub oil on a evening because it is more of an oily obviously feel and it kind of sits on top of the skin and then gradually soaks in so what I'll do is I will use the oil on an evening before I'm going to bed and then when I'm in bed obviously I will just let it soak into the stomach so I always always massage these creams in I try to give my stomach a good sort of one minute to two minute massage Obviously it's trying it's good to bond with the baby as well and I like to just really just give my stomach a good rub. I go quite low down, like around the vaginal bone and then around my hips and round my like back of my stomach just to make sure that I get the cream everywhere. And then obviously I use the tummy rub scrub in the shower. So I probably only use this like once or twice a week. I don't use it very often. So they are my Mamma Mia creams. So everything that I've got in this video I will link below in my description box. So next we have the Pregnacare original tablets. So anyone that's watched my trying to conceive video will know that I used the preconception ones of these and I am convinced that's what helped me get pregnant because I only, we tried for two months, well we tried for two ovulations, first ovulation didn't work and then after that I invested into the prenatal vitamins and then I got pregnant so I'm convinced it was these that actually helped. Obviously it's really really important to be consuming all the correct nutrients when you are pregnant for you and your baby. So a lot of companies will do one specifically for pregnancy. So it's got things like your vitamin D which is really important and your folic acid, your iron, your zinc. So they'll have a big list of like what they've got in on the back of them and it's just got all the correct things that you and your baby need. So I take one of these every single morning or I try to take one every single morning. So the pregnant care ones are quite expensive compared to some other brands but I just feel like it's a really established company and I would rather pay a few pounds more to know that I am actually getting the correct vitamins because a lot of companies will sell like a 
prenatal vitamin or pregnancy vitamin and if you actually look at the content they'll hardly have anything in each one so for example these have got 400 IU of vitamin D you might buy a tablet that's got 100 so it's not got enough in it at all and then like the folic acid it's got 400 UGs you might buy one and it might have 100 UGs so I just think it's important to invest into a good prenatal vitamin especially because our diets can be so hit and miss when we are pregnant and I guess it just helps you to know that you are putting as much as you can into your body to help you and your baby. So next we have, so I don't use these every day but we've got some vitamin C tablets and some hydration tablets. So obviously when you are pregnant you are more prone to be a little dehydrated, you need to drink more water because you've got more blood levels in your body and obviously you have another human in your body. So some days when I feel like I haven't drank enough water at all I will have a hydration tablet just to get those electrolytes in. Usually I'll definitely take them on a weekend when I've had a pizza or something the night before and I do feel really dehydrated and then obviously I have the vitamin C tablets as well so vitamin C is obviously really good for our immune system and just a, a good vitamin to be having so I probably have one of these once or twice a week again if I remember and I'm not really into plain water at the minute so this flavours my water like an orange flavour so I just think I'm getting vitamins and a bit of taste at the same time so next we have this baby go pregnancy support belt so someone told me about this belt because i when i was out walking i was getting like a stitch in my lower part of my stomach and my belly was just kind of hurting and i felt like a lot of pressure so the belt actually helps to support and keep your stomach up and just sort of helps support your stomach. It's also meant to be really good for lower back pain and hip and joint pain as well. Luckily, obviously I haven't actually had that yet, so I only really use this when I go out walking. So you grab the first bit and you pop that around your stomach. You don't want it to be too tight, you just want it to sit nicely underneath that bump. So you can just use this part on its own, especially in sort of your first and your second trimester, it will still support a little bit. And then you can take the big part and wrap it round and it'll just add extra support and extra tightness. And I think that's definitely the most important part if you have lower back pain. And then you can also take the back of the back off here and you would then attach over the bump like that and then it would come down so that is mainly for your third trimester I don't feel like I've had to get to that point yet so there's many ways that you can wear this pregnancy belt you can wear it when you're sleeping you can wear it for walks you can wear it for exercise if you are training like in the gym or with weights you can also wear it then as well it's definitely one of the best things I've invested in in my pregnancy it literally is just a pregnancy support belt and it's also very very good for post partum apparently it's really good at helping rebuilding your core and just binding sort of your belly back together so it's good to sleep in and exercise in after labor so this was i think i got it on offer for 22.95 i think they're meant to be about 25 pounds so i didn't save loads but it had like 10 percent off i think yeah i would 100 percent recommend one of these especially if you do exercise or lots of walking it just helps to support the belly and the bump and your lower back so currently i just wear it like that and then this little bit here is just round the back but then you can obviously attach that up a bit as well to to really give you some good support so I've never actually had a pregnancy pillow, I've never felt the need to buy one, I just feel like they look really big and annoying and they would get in the way, especially when you're sharing a bed with your partner or your husband, I just think that they're very impractical, but I think because I've always slept well in this pregnancy and... I'm not uncomfortable, I just really haven't felt the need to buy one, but one thing I have been doing is just literally putting a cushion between my putting a cushion between my knees. 
So when you are pregnant, you are meant to sleep on your left side because it's apparently the best blood supply to your baby. They do say the right is not as bad as what they used to think. So if you end up sleeping on your right, it's not bad. But they do say to try and fall asleep on your left side. So I will fall asleep on my left side and I will literally just pop this between my knees and it just really helps to open up your hips and your pelvis and relieve pressure on your lower back. So even though I don't have any issues with my lower back, I do definitely feel like when I have a cushion or a pillow between my knees, I fall asleep so much quicker and I just feel a lot more comfortable. And to be fair, it's probably something that I'll carry on doing even after I've given birth. I just think it's a really comfortable way to sleep. And a lot of athletes and physios will tell like clients and customers to wear to sleep with a pillow between the legs to help relieve pressure and pain so it's a very natural thing to actually do so yeah that's just it's not something i've bought i've literally i literally use a cushion off my bed or a pillow off the spare bed and just shove it between my knees and it also i think it helps me to stay on my side as well i find that if i don't have a pillow between my knees i will end up waking up on my back which they really don't recommend especially in your third trimester as it stops the blood supply to the baby so yeah quick easy one cheap and cheerful a cushion between the knees only invest into those pregnancy pillows if you really feel like you need to don't just fall into the norms of thinking that you need one or you are strange if you don't have one because I have never felt the need to have a pregnancy pillow obviously everyone is different I know a lot of people can't live without one but I sleep fine without one so I just don't feel like it's anything that I need to invest in. So next up I'm going to show you some of the apps that I use. So I actually only use two apps for pregnancy. There's loads and loads of pregnancy apps. There's loads of apps that show you the size of your baby. There's loads of apps that will explain the stage that your baby's going through. But I just feel like I don't need five apps to tell me basically the same thing. So I just use one app of each thing so i use the pregnancy plus app which is by philips i think so this is how it looks when you log on so it's telling me i'm on day 201 i'm 28 weeks and five days pregnant you can click onto your baby and you can just sort of move it around and that is how my baby apparently currently looks then there's like a little information section and it will just sort of tell me a few tips and things that the baby's going through. So this week it says that my baby's irises can now respond to light and then all the internal organs are maturing and prefer preparing to function on their own at birth. And the baby's skin is now beginning to look less wrinkly. So if I click off the baby, then I can also scroll down and it tells me loads of different things. There's loads of different blogs all the time. So the daily blog today is choosing a stroller. Then learning to stay calm with meditation. Then there's lots of scheduling and actions. So I can enter all my appointments on here. I can add pregnancy notes. So if I want to write a bit of a diary, I can just add all my notes on here. Then there's also like loads of promotions from Philips obviously and then just things like daily info like here there's fake tan so this one for example today is saying about how fake tan some fake tans obviously is safe and some isn't then it also shows you your belly so that's currently how my belly is looking at seven months and then if you just flick across it obviously is gonna start getting I'm just going to show you it as it gets smaller. So that was obviously it when I first got pregnant. This is not my belly, by the way. This is just the app. And then... That is it now. And then if I go onto my belly, I can then add my own photo. So if I go back to six months, that's me at six months. Five months. Ooh. Four. So you get the gist. You can add your own photo. So that's really interesting. And then at the bottom there's like today which is where all the blog is and then it telling you like how many days you are. Then you've got the baby. So there's loads of baby names. You can click your favourite baby name so that you've got like a full list. There's the size of the baby. So my baby is currently the size of a puppy or I could change it to sweets. So my baby's the size of a box of chocolates. 
Our fruit is a pumpkin or winter squash as the Americans would say. Then there's me, there's a birth plan, there's guide, you can track your own weight on there, there's appointments and then there's like a to-do list and like a shopping list. There's a hospital bag on there, checklist, a kicking counter, contractions counter. Obviously the contractions counter would be when you're actually in labour but I just feel like it's a great app and there is literally everything on there that you could ever need to track you and your pregnancy and your baby. I, I literally couldn't need much more than that. But it tells me everything I need to know about the baby's development. There's places for me to write things down. There's checklists. There's showing me how a baby would look if it was born now, telling me the weight. There's loads of blogs on there, loads of information. So yeah, definitely one of my favorite apps. And I think it's one of the best apps there is around for pregnancy. And then the second app that I use, so this is, there's only two apps that I use for pregnancy. The second one is called Squeeze Time, which is here. So this is to track your pelvic floor exercises. So for example, I've just gone onto it now. If I press start and then start, it's telling me to squeeze and count three seconds. And then I'm resting for five and then I'm squeezing for three, five, then I'm resting for five. And then there's other bits to it, so it'll tell you to squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. It'll tell you to squeeze and hold for 10 seconds and then shorter rests. And it just, you can set it so that it reminds you that you need to do it and you need to log on and get your exercises done. So like today, it says not out of two exercises done today because obviously I haven't done it properly yet. You can choose the endurance, you can choose the speed. There's like a mountain climb one, which is like an interval of your pelvic floor. Then there's loads of different things on there that you can choose. There's like adverts for things to buy like you can obviously get those things that you actually put up your vagina to help with your pelvic floor and stretching the perineal muscle that helps you get your baby out so yeah they're the two apps that i use so they squeeze time and the pregnancy plus so it is really 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 important to practice those pelvic floor exercises a lot of people tell me that when they've gone to labour and they've never done the pelvic floor exercises that they really regret not doing it. So I only downloaded this about three weeks ago and I don't use it every day. I do genuinely forget but I'm, when I'm heading now to 30 weeks I really, really, really need to remind myself to use it. So lastly we have books. So I think reading is one of obviously the best way to get in information whether you're reading a blog whether you're reading a website or whether you are reading actual books. So the first one that I would recommend, this is mainly for people who are in the early stages of pregnancy or who are wanting to get pregnant. And it's called Optimum Nutrition Before, During and After Pregnancy. And it's by a guy called Patrick Holford. So he does lots of nutrition books. I've actually got another one in here by him just called the Optimum Nutrition Bible. So I bought this about a year ago because even though we weren't trying for a bit, well, yeah, we probably, no, it's what, nearly June, we started trying in October, but I knew that I wanted a baby eventually and I'm really interested in pre and postnatal fitness and nutrition, so I bought the book mainly just to read myself and then to give information to other people. But it's definitely a really interesting read. It tells you everything that you need to know about it, improving your nutrition and your health to conceive a baby. It tells you everything you need to know what to avoid when conceiving a baby and how so many little factors within your diet and your lifestyle can actually affect your fertility. And then obviously it tells you lots of things to be eating during pregnancy, things to avoid during pregnancy. And then the after, I haven't actually read that bit because obviously I'm not there yet. So I feel like I don't need to read that bit yet. There's quite a few recipes in there and even like healthy food that your child will love. And there's recipes for weaning and all sorts of things like that. So it's definitely, definitely a good investment. It tells you everything you need to know about nutrition for your pregnancy and for your baby. And conceiving a baby, I think that's one of the most important things because 
without conceiving you're not going to have a pregnancy anyway so I 100% recommend this book for anybody who is wanting a child and then lastly we have the hypnobirthing books so not everyone believes in hypnobirthing but I think preparing yourself for labour as much as possible is more important than not preparing yourself looking at labour in a positive way is more efficient then not looking at it in a positive way. So I just feel like even if you don't really believe in hypnobirthing, reading up on it, you might as well do it because it's going to help you more than it's not going to help you, even if you don't believe in it, because it's helping you understand your body, understand how your body pushes a baby out, how your body actually births a child. And it's just trying to help you and your mindset stay, stay positive. So I just think there is absolutely nothing wrong with that and yet yeah, you might not believe in it but I think as soon as you start reading about birth and preparing yourself for labour the better you will feel about it. So the first one is by Siobhan Miller and it is called Practical Ways to Make Your Birth Better. So I've not read this yet, I've been recommended it by so many people, it's the number one bestseller on Amazon and I'm just really really looking forward to reading it. I'm going to start reading all my hypnobirthing books and courses next week. So this has been highly recommended by a lot of people even though I haven't yet read it myself. And then the next one which I started reading a few weeks ago is called The Hypnobirthing Book literally and it's by Catherine Graves, an inspirational guide for a calm, confident and natural birth. Again it's very about hypnobirthing but it's even if you do not believe in that word it's just preparing you for labour telling you how to control yourself to control your mind and it's just preparing you for everything that you could come across so I just I just really don't think there's anything wrong with reading up on labour I think the more clued up you are on it the more aware you are of what could happen the more aware you are of maybe knowing that you are in control and you and your baby are in control over anybody else I think is a massive massive positive thing and if you can help yourself through labour by reading a bit of material then I just think it's worth it. So thank you so much for watching this video I really really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you take something from it that will help you and your future pregnancies or the current pregnancy that you have Obviously everything in this video is what I've recommended, it's not anyone else's views, it's just my views. Everything in the video I will link in the description box below. So please make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.